Okay, we've talked a little bit about what happens in relativity when we're dealing with a charge density, right? So I'd like to just go through an example of this. Um, basically, what I'd like to do is I would like to have a um, uh, s sort of cube, and I'll draw the cube this way. So I'd like to have a cube where a, um, where if that's the center here, so we've got a cube going through here like that, we'll say that's the center, and through the center, through the center of this edge, over here, there we have a particle coming towards it, all right, at a speed v. So this cube in its own frame is a cube, right? So that means that it has all the requisite cube-like properties. Each one of these faces or each one of these edges has a length a. Um, each one of these angles is a 90 degree angle and all that other fun stuff. Um, and this guy here, he's just coming straight on at the cube. Uh, what I'd like to do is I'd like to see what happens to the charge density. So this guy all starts off with the charge density rho. What happens to it uh, when this particle is looking at the charge density? Okay. Um, and so this is you know just a basic sort of Lorentz contraction thing. I think we did a similar problem in class. And we'll do an even more interesting problem in the next video. Um, so how do we approach these things? Well, uh, the thing we want to do is we want to start by figuring out what exactly we have. Well, we have a charged cube, right? And um, what we have in that charged cube is um, something with a side length A. and a charge density rho. Okay, so this guy's coming in here at that, that speed, so we also have a particle, right? That approaches it at speed v. And it's going to have an angle and that angle is going to be um, some number. Um, so let's see. I think actually in this case I want to give these some numbers. Um, I don't usually do that in these videos, but I think it'll make things a little clearer and um, have fewer nas less nastiness in the end, right? Due to due to the um, due to the Lorentz contraction. So the speed, I think, should be the square root of 3 times c over 2. That's a nice, useful number that you um, remember from far too much trigonometry. And the angle that it's coming in at would be 45 degrees. That's another useful number that you're very, very used to. So we, we take these two guys, and I think we can get a pretty reasonable looking um, answer that, that we'll like. So, um, what we're going to have to do, what we want to find, is um, the charge density according to the particle. And that would be rho prime, let's say. Okay, so the way we're going to approach this is, like I said, by the Lorentz contraction. So um, the concept, let's put the concept here, is the Lorentz contraction. And that, you'll recall, recall has an equation that looks... Um, something like L prime is equal to L times the square root of 1 minus V squared over C squared. That, and it's because this, this is an ugly term that I wanted to make that, uh, give that a number. All right. Um, I think the thing to do now is to actually draw what's going to happen, right? Um, 
And so I'm going to draw it because, I mean, it, it'll tell us what we actually have to do and why the Lorentz contraction is so important. So really I'm going to look at a two-dimensional slice of this. So I'm going to ignore this A here because it doesn't get contracted in any way. Um, so I'll just look at the, sort of the two-dimensional picture where we have a diamond-like shape here. Um, and that's our center. And coming in along that center is this particle coming in at some speed v. Okay. Um, so this is the um, frame of the cube, the cube's frame. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the um, particle's frame, right? So the particle's frame, um, what's going to happen is this, this guy is going to contract. So it's going to be a skinny diamond like this. Right? And that'll be the center. And this will be moving towards the particle at some speed v. And this distance here will also contract, right? Um, I don't think that distance is going to be very important, but in any event, it, we, sh we should um, make it clear that the, the distance between here and here is different in the two frames, okay? So, um, so this is what we're looking at for our... Um, for our problem. So we want to go from here to here. Okay? So particles frame. Okay, so uh, we don't have very much more to do. We're ready to go, I think. Um, so we just have to put together what our strategy is and then execute it. Um, so uh, I think um, I think what we'll do is uh, first start with the diagonals. One find lengths of diagonals, and um, this is going to be the reason for this is pretty obvious. See, each one of these guys here is going to is going to um, contract. So it's probably easier to figure out what happens to these diagonals because this diagonal is going to, isn't going to contract because it's perpendicular to the motion, right? Um, whereas the um, this diagonal here is going to contract. So by looking at the diagonals, I can keep the entire effect happening right here at the um, at at this um, at this sort of along this line, and I don't have to worry about what's going on over there. Uh, otherwise, I have to do some other stuff. In fact, I'm going to have to do all that other stuff later. But why not just, um, why try to combine everything when I can do it separately? I think that's probably the best way to go about this. Um, so first I find the lengths of the diagonals, and then I'm going to perform the contraction. And after I perform the contraction, I'll have new values for the diagonal lengths and this perpendicular length here. Although they might not be new, right? That's what I was just saying is the reason why I'm doing that. I want to limit the number of things um, that actually change. Uh, three, then I'll have to um, uh, find the lengths. Well, I don't have to find the lengths in this one, right? So. Three, I'll um, find the area of the face. So I'll use the um, I'll use the uh, area of this face to find the volume by expanding out here, right? So if I find the area of the face, I can find the um, volume. Then I can use that to um, relate row prime to row and A, right? Uh, then I'll um, find the volume, because once I have that area, I, finding the volume is not a problem. Uh, then I'll use invariance of the total charge. Okay, and I'll, and I'll use that to find um, rho prime, to find the um, new 
uh, charge density, the charge density in the particles frame. Okay, so let's just um, start start with the geometry. Right, the geometry is not that hard. Right, I just have to figure out what these lengths are. They're both the same. Right, so even though we'll have two of them, we'll have a um, diagonal that's perpendicular, this one, and a diagonal that's um, parallel, this one, or uh, trans transverse and longitudinal, you might also say. Um, th they're both going to be the same. So they're this. So this is sort of like. Um, twice this distance, right? So this is a um, right triangle here with A and A, right? Which means that this is going to be the square root of A squared plus A squared, which is equal to the square root of 2A, which is something that you should have seen coming uh, because you've seen it so many times in trigonometry and physics class and all those other places before. So it's it's exactly what we thought it would be. So we perform the um, contractions. Uh, we just said this delta perpendicular prime is equal to delta perpendicular, which is equal to the square root of 2a. There's been no change because it's perpendicular to the motion. This a here, right, this a, um, we'll call that a perpendicular prime, is also equal to a perpendicular, which is equal to a. So. So this guy hasn't changed either. The only thing that's going to change is this part. Set up the problem just for that, right? So delta prime parallel, then we have to do the Lorentz con contraction. So the Lorentz contraction says it's equal to delta uh, parallel times this square root of one minus b squared over c squared. Right? Uh, delta parallel is the square root of two a and this thing is 1 minus the square root of 3c over 2 squared over c squared, right? So this is 3 quarters, so we have 1 minus 3 quarters, that's 1 half, right? So, so the, this whole thing is 1 half, so we have a over the square root of 2. Okay, so um, so let me see, one, three quarters, one quarter, one half, one, over the square root of two. Okay, pretty good. All right, so the area of the face, well, the area of the face is um, basically, yeah, we'll have to con construct it using the diagonals, but if you look at this, right, if we take, um, basically this guy times that guy, we have this guy here, right? So, um, and for, basically for each one of these triangles, we have an additional triangle um, of, the same, of the same size, of the same area. So all we have to do is we have to multiply the two diagonals together and divide by two and we'll have the area of the face. So a prime is going to be equal to um, uh, one half times delta parallel prime times delta perpendicular prime, uh, which is equal to um, what did I say here? Um, the square root of two a times a times the square root of two divided by 2, which is equal to a squared over 2, okay? Um, the original a was just a times a, which is a squared, right? So the volume, then v prime is equal to a prime, uh, a perpendicular prime, right? And a perpendicular prime was still just a, so we have a cubed over 2, whereas v originally was a times a times a, which is a cubed. All right, so I think we're doing pretty good. Um, now we want to say that Q prime is equal to Q, which means that they're both equal to um, rho V, which, or in other words, rho prime V prime. So we have rho times V is A cubed, and that's equal to rho prime 
um, times a cubed over 2. Okay. And now we have the incredibly difficult algebra to take, you know, but we have these two equal, this, this stuff um, cancels, so rho prime is just equal to 2 rho. So we've doubled the charge density going that quickly, which is a um, pretty interesting result, I think. It's pretty fun, it's a, and it's actually a real application of this uh, Lorentz contraction, whereas some of the things that you may have done in modern physics may have seemed a little contrived. Obviously, this is something that um, means something. If it's not obvious to you, look at the next video. The next video will show something that we are going to show in class uh, when we talk about relativity and fields and um, how, how it comes directly from this sort of consideration. So thank you very much, and I will see you in class.